My name is uh, Hector Miranda Plaza, and I go to Clearwater Central Catholic High School. The amount of grief that anybody could have into first. Yeah, we had a really hard time talking about the CRISPR case. Yeah. I think just because there's so many aspects to talk about. One aspect of it led to the other aspect, led to the other aspect. It was like an endless rabbit hole that you just kept in. Hey, so I walk into the room, we sit down, and you know we're waiting there patiently. Anxiety's uh, at all time high. Now we are ready to begin. The case is number seven, CRISPR Conundra. The moment they said CRISPR, I think it just sort of clicked in our minds. Like our hearts just fell. Like this is you know this is the one case, the one case that we haven't been able to like solve properly. We get, and from there it was just. Clearwater Central, you will now have up to three minutes to confer before beginning your presentation. You may start your time. It's, it's one of those cases where you find one exception to a rule for a solution, and then all of a sudden you find an exception to that, and then you keep looking to that. For cases like that, I mean, there is no like one solution that you can apply, which makes things so much more difficult, but also also much more interesting. Your time is now up. You now have six minutes to make your presentation. Well, right from the get-go, we, we had a rough idea of where we wanted to go with it. And because germline editing is done before, um, in a prenatal setting, before obviously the embryo is fully developed and born, there is no element of consent other than the parents. We knew for sure that we didn't want it to be used for anything to do with like artificial, for aesthetic purposes, right? You shouldn't be able to change your race, you shouldn't be able to like, you know, give yourself, enhance your features, make yourself more quote unquote attractive, however you define that. Um, using CRISPR for the sake of aesthetic purposes could have unintended consequences, that could have um, great social ramifications in that regard, but for other aspects, like for example, the curing disease, um, we do believe that is something that is much more acceptable. Where it got money though was um, because we had agreed that it should be used for mostly things like diseases. It got money when we tried to ask ourselves what, can, what counted as a disease, right? And then that also brought the other question of, you know, what it doesn't even mean to be human. Why shouldn't we do these things? Thank you. We look forward to hearing your response. Um, I remember we were always like, okay, as long as they don't ask about these two things, we're fine. We were wondering how, how we should go about defining disease or defining what should be edited out. I guess the question that should be asked is what really does it mean to be human? Because for example, the bodies of elite athletes, you could argue, are genetically better than that of an average person. Maybe you could argue they're superhuman. Where does this line lie? And then the first thing you say is those two things. We're like, all right, <laughs> we're in a bit of a pickle here. Um, if certain um, traits are, are you know, selected by certain people, then it could cause a, you know, cause certain preferences socially and you know that could have detrimental impacts. So for example if you select for race you know more more people might choose a certain race but emphasis on, on people of other races things like that. Oftentimes when I do talk about these things it's from a it's from a it's from a lens of you know where I want the world to be rather than the why and how that's happening. So when it comes to ethics you know it's like oftentimes I've had to argue against things that I wanted to do because you know, the justification just wasn't there. Like when you get to the why it is, is it ethical? And if so, is it even means to get there ethical? All of a sudden you end up with a completely different answer. It gives a quiet and understanding space, an open space to talk about these things. It's a form that quite frankly, I don't think most people have. Do you not, uh, and would you agree that there is a risk of authoritarianism when we say that we can't codify it? 